and welcome back. I'm uh, out in the Sparrens today, which will make my third mountain range in three weekends, which is uh, pretty good going for me. Uh, two weeks ago, yesterday, um, I was in the. Uh, two weeks ago, yesterday, I was in the Blue Stack Mountains. Uh, last weekend, I was in the Mourne Mountains, and today I'm in the very beautiful. Uh, Sparren Mountains. I'm right on the border between County Derry and County Tyrone. Um, the route that I'm taking today kind of crisscrosses over and back across the county border. Um, I'm almost an hour and only two kilometres <laughs> into the walk today. Uh, I started off down in Goals um, at a beautiful uh, little stream um, cracking parking spot and followed a track up a um, short distance before I, I struck out across a stream and followed another little stream up to the top of the first summit of today which is called Mullah Sala. Uh, Mullah seems to be um, a popular name for uh, summits here in the Sparrens. Um, I'm not sure what it means. I'm going to have to look it up and uh, I'll pop it up on the screen if I find out what it is. But as I say, Mullah Sala, it's 437 metres, which isn't very high, but it's been a bit of a slog to get up here. <laughs> uh, I, I haven't done any walking all week, which should mean that my legs are rested, but uh, I'd say they're out of condition more than rested. And I spent all day yesterday, Sunday, uh, working in the garden around the house. I'm paying the price of two or three years of neglect in the uh, in the exterior of the house with the garden and the, the, the general outside of the house. Uh, so yesterday was uh, the start of my project to try and get that cleared up, but uh, I'm definitely feeling it in the back and feeling it in the legs today and just a general lack of energy. So uh, I hope I have the legs to complete this walk today. It's a 16 kilometer hike and it takes in six uh, summits in uh, this part of the Sparrens and I don't believe I've been up any of these. I have been close by here before uh, over at Moy Damlet Forest so at some stage during the walk today I'll be able to get views across to there um, but I don't think I have been on any of these summits. I didn't actually check them on mountainviews.ie um, despite getting this track from Mountain Views. But uh, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, weather's cracker today. It's lovely and bright. Uh, there's some sunny spells. It's a bit overcast, but the clouds good and high. And uh, there's a bit of a strong breeze blowing at the minute. But uh, actually, I've had the drone up a number of times already. This, this countryside around here is just beautiful and perfect for the drone. And uh, the wind's not causing it too many problems. So yeah, the wind's keeping me nice and cool. And uh, I'm just sheltering, as you can see here behind a wee conifer tree. In typical uh, Sparrens fashion, the only thing that's marking the, the, the actual summit here is a confluence of um, fence posts and uh, this lone solitary little conifer tree which has escaped I think from the uh, forest across the valley there on the, on the side of the opposite hill which I think is Gold's Forest but I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, as always, thanks for joining me today and uh, I hope you enjoy what you see of the Spare Mountains. Uh, and it's, it's a mountain range, I suppose it's got a bit of a bad rep at times for being heavy, soggy ground and rounded, boring hills. But I like the Sparrens. You know, there's something about them that's nice. Um, it's hard to beat the rocky, high, scrambly mountains and trails and tracks and everything. But uh, this is a nice change as well. So as I say, thanks for joining me today and I hope you stick with me for the rest of the hike.
Okay, <laughs> in usual fashion, I got it wrong. Uh, this uh, fence junction you can see behind me uh, at 485 meters is actually the summit of Molossella. <laughs> uh, the point where I was back down there is a small summit. Um, it's not a named summit, it's, uh, it's 437 meters as I said and uh, it's uh, I was just I was just looking at the map and reading it wrong. The uh, Mullah is written on the map across the uh, the two summits, and sure, if, if I switched my brain on at all, I'd realise that it makes more sense for the higher point to be the name point. But anyway, whatever. <laughs> um, I've reached the summit anyway. I'm at the top here, and as I said, in very very typical Sparrow's fashion, that's the summit. Now that fence also marks the boundary, the county boundary. So the fence runs along here. Where I'm standing at the moment is County Tyrone and just across the fence there now behind me is County Derry. So I'm just about to enter County Derry now and uh, get my passport stamped <laughs> for crossing the border. Um, way over there behind me is Croc Brack um, and that's my next uh, port of call. I think it's uh, 598 metres and then I'm going to do a swing around Hopefully this is coming out in the camera. Swing around and around and around and around. And I'm going to follow that ridge all the way along. And one of those hills over there in the background, I'm not sure which one, is Minard, which is the last summit of the day. Uh, I have a feeling this is going to take me a good bit longer than I anticipated. Um, but anyway, we'll see how we get on. Um, summit of Molasella for now, anyway. <laughs> uh, it was dead easy getting going, getting up here as well. So. Um, this is what I love about the Sparrows. It's uh, navigation is very, very easy. The summits are all fairly close together, and because it's such a heavily sheep grazed area, you've lots of fences. And basically, I've been following the fence since 0.437 um, from that wee tree that I was filming at last, and I've just basically followed the fence the whole way up here now to to the top of Molasella. Now the next bit, I don't think. As a fence, I have to cross this fence here and then I'm into open ground. But Croc Brack's straight up there in front of me. Um, an alternative route um, and another track that I saw on... Um, I'm trying to turn around, I don't know what way the wind's blowing here. Um, the al alternative route that I saw on Mountain Views was to follow the fence line down now and go across to Outermore or Outermore, I'm not sure what way you pronounce it. Um, but then you'd miss Crop Brack and you'd miss, uh, I want to say Spellog, um, I think that's what it's called. So those two summits are on, on part of this walk. So uh, the shorter walk is 12 kilometres and this one is rooted at 16. So, um, and it takes in the six summits. So I thought it's, it's an easy little extra add on loop. So <laughs> that's why I've decided to do that one today. So on to Crop Brack now, you know.
Well, I'm now at the top of Crockbrack, which is uh, 526 meters, and that was a bit of a slog. Um, I've just come from that direction there. I'm, I'm standing now at this uh, stile, which um, <laughs> I know it's a crossing point for a fence, but it's a very welcome resting point for me now. Uh, that was a real slog. I, as I said, I come along that fence. I came over, I came down from the top of Mullochsala and dropped down, down, down into this lovely wee glen, uh, wee valley. But then, and then crossed a the river. And then it was a real slog all the way up to Crookbrack. Um, really, really pulled the legs out of me. The, the ground underneath wasn't actually too bad. It's uh, dry enough and uh, very dry for, for the sparrows. Not, not the usual boggy terrain you would expect. But uh, it was quite soft going at times. And there was a lot of hummocks and hollows and little drains to cross and stuff like that. And uh, my legs are tired, as I said earlier on. So it was a real slog to get back up here. Um, over there behind me now is the next challenge um, and unfortunately I think I'm going to be repeating what I've just done. I'm going to be dropping down, losing a lot of elevation and then slogging back up to the top of the ridge again but uh, the hope is that when I get to the top of that ridge that I won't have to repeat that again but I have a, <laughs> have a horrible feeling I probably will uh, it's absolutely gorgeous up here I'm sitting looking over across at Moy Damlet Forest and uh, the road between Moninini and Feeney which I have cycled on the Dark Hedges 200 Audax and that is a killer of a climb on a bike but it's, uh, it's nice to see it from this perspective uh, oh um the walk's taken far longer it's far slower and far harder going than what i expected so uh, i haven't actually stopped for lunch what i just did was i just i've been drinking water instead of having tea and uh i've just munched on a sandwich at the bottom of the hill very quickly there so i think that's going to be the theme of today i'm just going to have to eat on the hoof um it's it's now two o'clock and I'd kind of expect it to be finished by four and home by five. Um, I don't think that's going to happen now, which could cause some problems at the house. Because I'm supposed to be making dinner for the boys and taking Connor to football practice tonight. So uh, <laughs> uh, I might have to earn some back some brownie points after today. Um, I've only... I've less than six kilometres done, so I have another ten to do. And I have a serious amount of climbing still to do, so... Uh, I guess I better stop yapping at the camera and get on with it then. <laughs> Dropped down into this wee glen, which is a very welcome respite from the wind. Hopefully you can see it there behind me. Looks like there's a wee stream, or I'm at the head of a wee stream that's been cutting its way down through the hills over the last God knows how many years. Um, 
I'm now following, unexpectedly, following part of what's called the Croc Brack Way. Um, it's not marked on the OES maps. <clears throat> My first indication that it was here was um, when I crossed the fence up there earlier on and I came across uh, a marker post um, or a directional post with a red arrow on it pointing to the top of Croke Brack. So that... Uh, when I got up closer up onto the summit of Croke Brack, um, I found another one and it had a marker on it saying the Croke Brack Way. Um, I've never heard of it, I've no idea what it is, whether it's a local way or whether it's um, something more official to do with Northern Ireland Walks. It is marked on the Mappy app system, uh, which is more open source, but it's it's not marked on the OS maps at all. But um, I don't stay with it the whole way. I'm not sure where it goes. I must look it up when I get home, actually. But uh, I follow it along this fence line that I'm following here yet again, another fence line. <laughs> uh, and up to the top of that hill there behind me and uh, it diverges off to the right and I carry straight on. Um, I can't remember the name of what you call it. It's Spell, Spell Hog, Spell Hog, I think you call it, uh, is the next hill. So um, I go straight on and, and the track goes off to the right. But I'm just enjoying the break here from the wind because it's all up on Croprack and all the way down there. It's been a very strong breeze. So it's just nice to get out of it for a couple of minutes. Maybe get another sandwich, very good idea. <laughs> So this is where I part ways with the Croke Brack Way. Um, an unexpected relationship that's ended very early. <laughs> um, I'm actually really impressed today with something else, just as a, a bit of a tangent. Um, I've been doing most of my, my navigation today using the Outdoor Active app on my phone. Um, now I have it combined with the, uh, the e tracks from Garmin that you can see on my front chest pouch there but uh, the um, the quality of the mapping on the Outdoor Active app is just so much better than, than what you can get for the E-Trex um, although it is pretty good um, if you look there behind me you can probably see or hopefully you can see a style and when I spoke up at the top of Croke Brack I was standing beside a style as well the Sperrins have additional mapping. Most of the mapping here in Ireland is 1 to 50,000 by Ordnance Survey Ireland or Ordnance Survey Northern Ireland, uh, depending on where you are, obviously. But the, the Sperrins have had, I think it's an activity map, it's called, and it's done to 1 to 25,000. And the quality and the accuracy and the detail in that map is outstanding. Um, when I lived in England, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Oh, nearly 25 years ago now, uh, 23 I think I left in 2001, um, I used to do a wee bit of walking over there and they had an excellent series called the Land Ranger series which was done to one, sorry, one to 50,000, the, um, oh I mixed up now, anyway, whatever, uh, it's done to the more detailed level and uh, you know, English and UK, mainland UK, uh, walkers are very very spoiled with the quality of the mapping they have but here in the Sperrins uh, we're very lucky we have that same quality and uh, I, I couldn't understand what the wee marking on the map meant at the top of Croke Brack to me it looked like a picnic bench <laughs> so when I got there I realized that it's actually a style so uh, this is another one as well so um, yeah no I'm really 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 pleased with Outdoor Active it's uh, it's been great it's a wee bit sore in battery life obviously but um, I have a good battery on my phone and it was well charged before I got here today and I'm not depending on that solely I do have a paper map in my bag I have a compass in my bag and um, I have the route also um, on my Garmin e-trex as well so I've everything covered but it's very easy just to whip out the phone and see exactly where you are on the map and where you're headed so yeah not very impressed with that so as I say I, I part ways now with Croke Brack Way and I'm heading uh, Straight up there. I don't know if I'm still going to be following this fence. I have a feeling I'll lose the fence. Um, and then it's a bit more of a slog up to the uh, the top of the next summit. So, But the views here are amazing. Um, that's down over Money Nini. And uh, probably looking out towards Loch Nee. It's very, very hazy. And I don't know the geography well enough here to say for definite. But anyway, onwards and upwards.
bit of a rickety old style that <laughs> I think it's seen better days. Um, right, I need to work out where I'm going now. Just come through that quite difficult patch of ground there behind me. <clears throat> to be honest, that's the first real bit of horrible ground I've had all day. None of it's been easy, um, but uh, going by what the sparings can be like, that, that it hasn't been too bad, but that bit was pretty horrible. Um, it's very damp, lots of peat hags, lots of up and down, very, very deep tussocks. And I was kind of very, very wary the whole way. This is the problem when you're a solo hiker is you always have to be so conscious of safety where you are, the fact that you're on your own, and the fact that if something happens, you're gonna to have to do quite a lot to recover yourself. And uh, just being sensible and being safe needs to be a number one priority. But uh, coming across that, I was very conscious, lots of wet ground, uh, using my poles, just testing the ground in front of me all the way, and um, making sure that before I step off, that I know what I'm stepping onto. And it, it was a bit slow and a bit, tiring and a bit time consuming but um i'm across it now and i'm, and I'm on to proper good grazed well grazed dry grass again um and just about to head up spell oak i'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it um i think from memory just looking at the map there we well ago it's 568 meters and um that means I have about 140 kilometers of climbing to do now. I just spin around, so that's it there just behind me. Uh, it doesn't always come out very well on the camera, just how steep hills are, but uh, standing down here at the bottom, it's a real uh, leg burner now to get to the top. But uh, nothing else for it, is there? <laughs> it's fun, type two fun. <laughs> the tiniest cairn in the sparrows. Uh. That's where I'm going next. So this is Spelog Summit number three. Definitely the hardest iron one of the day. 568 meters. Oh, beat now. Starving again, too. Just leaving the uh, fourth summit of the day and uh, probably the easiest one of the four so far. Um, not, uh, not Again, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Uh, it's either Otmore or Outmore, O-U-G-H-T-M-O-R-E. And it's a whole one meter <laughs> higher than the last summit at 569 meters. Um, Along the way as I was coming across there again I'm following the fence line which follows the old county boundary and I passed two of the county boundary stones and uh, I'm now on, uh, if you remember ages ago it feels like, it feels like a whole day ago now, um, when I was on Mullisala I said that I could go across to Outmore and that would be 11 and a half I think kilometre walk so I've now come across onto Outmore and uh, picked up that fence line where I was stopped at the top of Mullisala and uh, I'm now back in County Tyrone again um, and I'm now following the county boundary between Tyrone and Derry 
heading over towards um, summit number five. Um, and standing where I am here, there's a wee bit of a dip down into what looks like a bit of a wet call um, and a very small gradual rise up again to the summit over there. So I'm cautiously optimistic that I have the worst and the hardest part of the climbing done for the day because as I said earlier on, this walk's taking way longer than I expected. Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous though, I shouldn't be complaining, it's an absolutely beautiful day the sun's shining now the wind's quite strong and it's quite cool at times um but yeah i don't know if you can hear that i think it's a meadow pivot singing away in the background there i've had them with me all day as i said it's 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 a lovely walk i'm really really enjoying it uh that last bit coming across um from oh i forgot the name of it again <laughs> spell Spell Oog, I think you call it. <laughs> Coming across from there was very wet. Um, but looking at the ground, it's dried out quite a lot over the last couple of weeks. And I'd say after a, a prolonged period of rain, it would have been an awful lot worse. So it was very, very manageable. Um, <laughs> I've refilled my water bottle because it was nearly out. And I hope it's going to work out well because I ended up having to take it out of a bog pool and the colour of the water inside the filter was mank. <laughs> Lots of debris floating in it. Uh, I just hope I'm not going to regret it and that the Canadian B-free filters are as good as they say they are because uh, I'm now drinking that water. It was either that or run out and I have nothing until I was nearly at the end. So um, although the wind's been keeping me cool, it's still warm and I'm still sweating quite a bit in those hard climbs. So I need the water. Fingers crossed, <laughs> I have to go to work tomorrow, so <laughs> anyway, heading on again now, uh, heading for summit number five. Slight change of plans. <laughs> when I uh, Come off the camera the last time I looked at my watch and I all of a sudden realised it was five past four. <laughs> my original plan was that I would be finished between four and five and starting to head for home. Now, I realised fairly early into the walk that wasn't going to happen, but I just <laughs> I totally underestimated how long this walk was going to take. So. I don't know if you can see, just, I think that's on the camera here now, oh, there. Uh, there's a, oh, there. The, that stand of trees down there behind me. That uh, is at the end of the track that I started on and, and where I'm parked uh, from this morning. So plan B now is to come off the hill, head down towards that stand of trees, pick up the track and walk back to the van. Um, if I was to carry on and complete the full walk, I would need, it's still six kilometers, I'm probably gonna need, at the, at the speed I'm going, probably another three k, uh, three hours. And um, I don't have that time, simple as that. <laughs> I need to get home, I have a family to, uh, to get back to as well. And uh, I have uh, Connor to lift from football training tonight. So if I'm not home in time, he's left standing and that's not gonna happen. So, uh, I've still had a lovely walk. It's, I've really, really enjoyed what I've done. Yes, I'm going to have unfinished business here in the Sparrows today, but uh, looking at where I didn't go and other hills around it, there's definitely another walk there that can be done as well. So I'm going to come back another day, finish off what I haven't done and add on a wee bit more to it. This is a beautiful, beautiful part of the Sparrow Mountains and uh, I can't wait to come back. But uh, I need to get down to them trees first and get back to the van. <laughs> yeah. Well, made it off the hill. <laughs> Nearly left my walking poles behind me. <laughs> oh dear, right. So I'm off the hill. And uh, it's 10 to 5 now. That was, uh, wasn't overly easy going on that hill either. It was uh, very, very steep down, down, down pretty much. And then uh, quite a lot of wet ground at the bottom. And uh, a few fences to negotiate. 
but uh, that um, that stand of trees that I pointed up pointed out from the top of the hill uh, contained I, I figured it probably did an old abandoned farmhouse and farmyard and uh, this is a really good track now you can <coughs> see it here behind me so this is a really good track now so this uh, I've no idea how far it is back to the um, oh just need a clamber over this gate <coughs> without doing myself an injury <laughs> uh, so I just need to follow this track now back down to where I've parked the van which is outside another abandoned farmhouse so um, not the walk that I thought I was going to do today or not all of the walk that I thought I was going to do but as I said earlier ab absolute ball I really enjoyed it and I'm not sad that I've cut it short because I am very very much looking forward <coughs> to coming back Ticking off the two hills that I haven't done and hopefully adding on a few more. As I said earlier, the Sperns are a nice part of the country, somewhere I love walking anyway. And this is probably the nicest part of them that I've ever walked in. So, thanks for coming along and joining me. If you liked what you saw today, do me a massive favour and give it a thumbs up. Thumbs, ups, uh, thumbs up and comments are the best way that you can help out any channel. Um, it helps spread the channel on YouTube and helps get it in front of other people and puts it into their feed. So it's an easy thing for you to do, you just give it a thumbs up. If you do like my channel and you're not subscribed yet, feel free to hit the subscribe button as well. And uh, maybe you'll get a chance to see me the next time I come back to the Sparrows and tick off the two unfinished summits that I didn't get a chance to get on today. So as always, thanks to everybody that watches these videos. I'm still trying to get used to the idea that people watch my videos and enjoy them. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.